of corporate money in politics. The Supreme Court majority said the First Amendment, which is actually the Third Amendment, as you know, <laughs> you know, I know. allows corporations and PACs to spend unlimited amounts of money in campaigns, which means they get to mute your voice, because I don't know about you, but like I said, like these rare books that I have here tonight, you say, how am I flying? On fumes, I'm paying for this stuff myself. I find these books, like I said, I have some rare books. I have about $3,000 worth of rare books on hold that I'm paying off that I get sure when the lectures go forward to explain to people. But I'm doing it myself. But to cut, but you know, but I have this other group of people that are helping me, and, and three of them are here tonight. You know, and um, I'll, I'll introduce them at the end because I want them both to come up here, all three to come up here. But let me explain the change the rules pledge. Okay, the change the rules pledge is the answer to Citizens United. Like I said, five ago. Not that complicated. All you got to do is be smart. Okay, the Supreme Court says you can't take money out of politics, you can't stop corporations from donating. We know money mutes the voice of the people. What do you do? Okay, very simple. Each House, the Senate of, of Congress, the House and the Senate, each have under the Constitution the unconditional right to make their own rules for procedure. If you are elected to the House of Representatives or you are elected to the Senate, you are guaranteed the following things. The right to be seated, the right to introduce legislation, and the right to vote on anything in the Committee of the Whole. All other procedures, the right to sit on committees, the right to introduce and make changes in committees, are subject to the rules of the House and the Senate. Who makes the rules? The House and the Senate. They make their own rules. But more importantly, the rules are what are called non-justiciable. It's a fancy way of saying whatever rules the, 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 legislature, the legislative process creates for making legislation, the courts have no right to interfere with that. The only time the courts can interfere with that and say what you're doing is unconstitutional is if you don't seat someone, you don't get, you know, you don't let them vote in the committee of the whole. And we know that because Adam Clayton Powell was a guy in the 60s. He was not very well elected. It was by his constituents because they voted him back and Speaker Powell said, I'm not seating that son of a bitch. Pardon my language, that's the button. <laughs> and which point Adam Clayton Powell goes to court and the Supreme Court says, we can't get involved in a lot of stuff. Matter of fact, we can't get involved in almost anything to do with this. But you gotta see them, you gotta let them vote, and that's it. You can, you can, you can cut his legs out from under him, but you, you can't say no. If, if he's qualified, the people elected him. And we've had congressmen that have sat and served from prison. I'm not talking about recently, I'm talking about during the, the Alien and Sedition Acts. So the answer, but to cut to the chase, what does the change the rules pledge to? Having understood that you make your own rules and, and, and the courts can't do a god darn thing about it, okay, all you have to do is change the rules. The House and the Senate pass an internal rule. You can take all the PAC money and all the corporate money you want, but if you do, you forfeit the right to sit on any subcommittees and to make any changes in legislation and subcommittees, and all you get to do is to sit in the committee of the whole and vote when the House, you get your seat, and you get to vote when the legislation gets brought up. All the dirty stuff is done in committee. Like you said, the stuff comes up, by the time the telephone book comes up for voting, no one's read it, and it's all a thumbs up for thumbs up. All the dirty stuff has been done. Do you think ExxonMobil is gonna give some representative millions of dollars if they can't do anything for them? You know, you're the only people that are out for people because you believe I have the same philosophical view of government. Mm -hmm. Only people like the Tea Party uh, or, or, or other organizations on the other extreme, you know, the people who occupy Wall Street. At least they're doing something. They're acknowledging that the system is broken. But they haven't heard my answer. Yes, sir. Will that make it taxable for them also? In what respect? What do you mean? If they get funded by a lot of, by a lot of outside money, should they have to pay tax on it? No, you don't, you don't even have to do that. All you do is you take the power out away from money. Okay. I, I mean, if you try to tax, because there's tax limitations on taxing the Constitution. They make their own rules on that too. Right? Yeah, but what yes. I'm saying is, all you got to do is change the rules. You take money, you can't help the people to pay you off. One more question. Anyone else? Uh, I'd like to suggest that this problem is not limited to Congress. Of course not. To change the rules, Pledge, you should implement in your race. I guarantee you that your opponent ain't going to sign it. Uh, it is the. It is the trade-off between unmanageability of the discussion group you create, 6,000 people, well, <coughs> and that's unmanageable, versus the, the When you have elitists that are paid off and controlled by, you know, Teddy Roosevelt said the best answer for uh, to, to fix democracy is more democracy. 
I agree. My little district, the assembly, we put me representing 225,000 people. That's a lot of people. Now, I can tell you that with 15 towns you to visit, it would drive you crazy to visit every one of them often enough to get elected. Great. And it is a major stimulus to the development of machines. Mm -hmm. Machine mm -hmm. is a way to get around this problem of too many people to see personally. I agree. Uh, it, I agree. It, this is, this is such a fundamental problem that most people at any level don't know what to do about it and say leave it alone. Well, they turn their back on it because they don't know what to do. I have an answer. Yeah. And I just want to introduce Scott Newman, my brother Frederick John Laverne, and Leonard Marshall. They're the people that have been assisting me with this and fighting with me and helping me ride on the <laughs> And like I said, I will answer any questions if you want me to go talk anywhere else. Eugene, I'm what sorry. Federal Republic. Hmm? Which? What well, happened to Federal Republic? Which Republic? Our Republic. In our Republic? What happened to our Republic? Our yeah. democracy. Oh, our democracy. It got stolen. Yeah. It did. It got stolen. So because people weren't paying attention. Vigilance is the price of liberty. And people haven't been vigilant about watching their rights. And they were lost. We have. We have uh, Bumper mm -hmm. stickers and signs out here. Uh, we have shirts for sale. Um, and there's uh, some other literature in the back if you want to uh, take it. Also, we have the sign up sheet for the